and thanks to the organizers for for the invitation to speak. I, I really wish I, I was able to to come in person and, and uh, uh, engage in discussions with the participants, but uh, hopefully next time I'll, I'll have a chance to, to do that. So, uh, yeah, so I'll begin. I, I want to tell you about some uh, recent progress on Iwasawa theory of elite groups at, Rush, uh, at Eisenstein Primes. Uh, so let me begin by uh, with some introduction. So, uh, yeah, so I'll begin with some introduction. Okay, so I'm going to take E to be an analytic curve over Q. Of conductor N. And then we're going to take a, a prime P of, for, for now, can be any odd prime uh, of good ordinary reduction. And then there is this fundamental uh, descending sac sequence that we saw, uh, for example, in, in Adolf's uh, first talk uh, relating the, the Mordor Bay group, uh, tensor QP mod GP. This injects into the, the P infinity Selmer group. And uh, as we all know, the kernel of this inclusion is given by the P primary part of the Tate Shaparevich group. Okay, so as a motivation, uh, let's consider the following three statements. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, so the first is uh, what one might call the, the P part of the VSD formula in rank zero. Okay, so that's that's the statement that um, if the L value, if the central L value of the has available function of P is, is non-zero, then its periodic valuation after dividing by the neuron period is as predicted by the VSV formula. Okay, so namely uh, the periodic valuation of uh, the L value at one divided by the neuron period should be what BSD predicts, which is uh, in this case, uh, namely the, the order of Sha. divided by the, which should be finite, uh, divided by the size of the rational torsion square and times the product of the Tamagawa numbers. If you want, you can just take L dividing N. Okay, so that's the first statement. Then the, the second one we're gonna look at is what we now call the, the P-converse. To uh, Grosseri and Colibali. Okay, which is the statement that if the if the core rank of the P infinity Selma group is one, okay, so in other words, if if there is only a, a single copy of QP mod CP uh, in in this group, we uh, since we expect this to be finite, this should be coming from from an actual rational point of infinite order, and then by BSV, we would be led to predict that the order of vanishing is, is one. And actually, the reverse implication is what was shown uh, by Grosseg and Kolibagin, and, and recently, uh, it was our theory has given a way to, to go the other way. Okay, so. Okay, 
Okay, so we have these two. And, and lastly, uh, the third statement I want to mention here is uh, the p part of VSD, but now in rank one. Okay, so that's a statement that if now we assume that uh, the L series vanishes at one to order exactly one. Oops. Then the, the leading uh, Taylor coefficient around S equal to one should be as again as predicted by by BSD, at least when we look at at the adic valuations. Okay, so so what we expect is that the adic valuation of the first derivative at one. Now we need to, to make it algebraic. Uh, it's not enough to divide by the neuron period. Uh, we also need uh, a regulator, which is essentially uh, the neuron base height of one generator of, of model bay. That should be the same as uh, what BSD predicts, which in this case is, uh, well, the same terms that I had before. Okay, so the, the other of Shah. Divided by the size of the torsion. Square times the product of the Tamagawa. Okay. Oops. Uh, All right. So, so the, what, what's the goal of these mini curves? So, one of the goals will be to explain the, the recent proof of these statements one, two, and three for uh, what we call Eisenstein prime speed. So. The goal is uh, to explain uh, these results for Eisenstein. Okay, so these are primes uh, for which our elliptic curve uh, admits a rational uh, PI subgroup. Okay, so, oops. Uh, so these are primes for which our elliptic curve admits a rational PI subgroup. Okay, so, there exists a rational PI subgroup uh, between E and another uh, elliptic curve over Q or Another way to phrase it is uh, these are primes P for which the P torsion is, is reducible as a Galois model. Okay, so another way, another way to phrase this is that uh, the P torsion is uh, reducible as a Galois model. So GQ stands for the, the absolute Galois group of, two, of Q. Yeah, so uh, there is a question in the chat. Uh, why are these called Eisenstein? So as we're going to see uh, later, uh, I think one of the reasons for this terminology is that uh, it is for these primes for which the new form associated with C, which is uh, by definition a cast form, actually has a congruence mod P uh, with, uh, with an Eisenstein series. Um, okay, so yeah, so I'll explain the, the reason. So this is uh, yeah, some recent work with joined with Jada uh, uh, Grossi and, and Chris Skinner, and uh, I want to uh, explain the proof of this. Okay, so today, uh, so what we're going to do today, a little bit of the plan. Uh, 
So the plan for today is actually uh, we're going to explain how uh, for any ordinary prime, at least a good ordinary as, as we are taking, good ordinary uh, prime P, okay, uh, Eisenstein or not for this, Uh, these uh, statements one, two, and three can be derived as a consequence of certain main conjectures in Iwasawa theorem. Okay, so one through three. Follow from a certain uh, so called uh, main conjectures. In Iwasawa theorem. Okay, so these implications are kind of well known uh, in the in the area. So, I'll, and they the statements apply equally well for uh, for any for any good ordinary prime. And then, in the remaining two lectures, I'll explain how we uh, prove these main conjectures that I'm going to mention in in a few minutes. Uh, in the case of Eisenstein primes, which uh, so far have resisted the previous previous attack. Um, okay, so are, are there any questions so far about uh, what we have on the screen? Okay, so if not, I'll, so there will be actually three different main conjectures, each one related to uh, each one of these three. Okay, so the, the first one uh, will be related to uh, what uh, it's often called a uh, Mazur's uh, main conjecture or the main conjecture for, for elliptic curves. Okay, so let's begin with that. Okay, so for this, uh, we're gonna do as, as we saw in Antonio's lecture, for example, uh, we're gonna work over the cyclotomic uh, ZP extension. Okay, so I'll denote it by Q infinity. So this is the this is the, the unique ZP extension over over Q contained inside here. Okay, I denote it's Gala group by gamma. It is the cyclotomic uh, ZP extension. So the Gala group of it. And then the, the first kind of basic result here, uh, proved by, by Mazur when he initiated uh, the study of Iwasawa theory of elliptic curves is the so-called Mazur's control theorem. Okay, and, and what this says is that uh, there are these natural restriction maps. Okay, so the restriction map. Uh, so we can go from the P infinity Selmer group over Kn, uh, sorry, Qn. Now we can further restrict uh, all the way up to Q infinity. And the image obviously lands in the fixed point by uh, this Galois group. And what Mazur proved is that these, these natural maps have finite kernel and co-kernel of order bounded as, as n goes to infinity. Okay, so these have uh, bounded of kernel and co-kernel, have finite kernel and co-kernel. Of order that remains bounded as n goes to infinity. Okay, and one immediate uh, consequence that uh, one can draw from this and that, that Mazur uh, did, Mazur used, was that if now we assume that the P infinity Selma group over the base is finite, 
which certainly is not always the case, but it happens uh, fairly often. Okay, so this is finite. Then uh, what you get is that if I denote by x, so this will be my notation, x eq infinity will stand for uh, the Pontryagin dual of the Selmer group over q infinity. Okay, so this denotes uh, Pontryagin dual. Okay, so the homes to QP mod GP. Okay, so what you get immediately is that this is well that this is finally generated is basically a consequence of weak model way. You know, you don't need the control theorem for this. But what one the stronger statement one gets under this hypothesis plus the control theorem is that uh, this model is torsion. So it's a finally generated torsion uh, lambda model. Sorry, sorry. Torsion uh, lambda model. Okay, here lambda denotes the the Wasawa algebra for for this group now. And as I said, the key point here is uh, this problem. Okay, so so uh, Maser was able to prove torsionness of this Iwasawa module under this hypothesis. But conjecture that that was true in general, even if if this was infinite, he still expected uh, this group to to be torsion over lambda. And moreover, he went further and uh, along the in the spirit of of the Wasawa main conjecture in the context of of class groups, uh, he gave a, a conjectural generator for the characteristic power series in terms of another element in the Wasawa algebra interpolating uh, L values. Okay, so in, in this this periodical function is what we now call the, the Mazur and Schwinton dagger uh, periodical function. So uh, before statement, before stating Mazur's main conjecture, let me briefly tell you about uh, this periodical function. Okay, so what they showed is uh, around the same time, the early 70s, they produced an element that I'll denote LP E over Q. Okay, so it's an element that they, they didn't quite show its integral. It, it has bounded denominators and characterized by a certain interpolation property. Okay, so such that uh, if I take any finite order character from gamma to uh, mu P infinity, so finite order. Uh, so we get the following interpolation formula. So uh, if we evaluate is a chi, which uh, makes sense to evaluate characters by linearity in uh, any element in lambda. So what we get is uh, in the case of the trivial character, I'll say in a second what this alpha is, uh, we get the normalized L value at one. If uh, chi is trivial, and otherwise we get uh, a twisted L value. So p to the n divided by the Gauss sum of chi inverse alpha to the n, and then times uh, the value of e twisted by chi bar divided by omega. The, the neuron period. Okay, so, and that's in the case where uh, chi is of conductor uh, bigger than one. Okay, and that's, <clears throat> uh, so I need to say what alpha is. Okay, so remember we are assuming P is an ordinary prime. This alpha is the unit root of the uh, Hecke polynomial at P. So alpha is the unit root the periodic unit root of x squared minus a p of e of x plus p. Okay, so this a p of e is the usual quantity, p plus one minus the number of points on, on over x p. 
And then this omega e, which already appeared before, but I didn't really define. This is the the real neuron period. Okay, so you integrate uh, the neuron differential of of e over a basis, a z basis uh, of the plus eigenspace of the homology of, of e. Okay. So that's. So now we have everything, uh, the relevant uh, Iwasawa module and, and the periodical function and Mazur's conjecture then. Uh, Was there any question? Yes. Is there some assumption on uh, ordinarity somewhere? Or? Oh yeah, 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 so certainly. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working in this situation. Ah, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P is always a good ordinary prime. And uh, throughout today, we're gonna work, we're working under this hypothesis. It will be later when we will specialize to, to uh, Eisenstein primes, which is just a subset of, of the ordinary ones. Any more questions? Okay, so yes, yeah, so now I can state Mazur's uh, main conjecture. Yes, is there a question? Okay, I'll continue, but uh, if there is some question, I'll feel free to interrupt. Okay, so Mesos, I mean, conjecture predicts that, as I already mentioned, uh, this X infinity should be a lambda torsion. And its characteristic ideal should be generated by, by the periodical function. Okay, so if you want implicit here is the statement that this periodical function should be integral. Um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, what's known about this. Okay, so that's the, the conjecture. And now what I want to explain is how this conjecture implies our first item here, the, the P part of VSD formula in, in rank zero. Yes, that will be a small, small proposition. Uh, maybe we can move to the next slide. Okay, so proposition one. So Mazur's main conjecture implies P bar of BSD formula in, in rank zero. Okay, so let's see the proof. Okay, so so remember the people of BSC is that uh, we still have it here. Okay, so if the L value doesn't vanish, uh, we should get uh, that at least at the level of the ad evaluations, uh, we get the BSC one. Yeah, there's a question in the chat, is there a similar result uh, over number fields? So, uh, well, so there is an issue already in defining uh, the, the periodical function. So uh, there might be some cases, certainly a, a billion extensions of Q might be okay, uh, but well, yeah, I think the results beyond Q are still rather fragmentary. Maybe the situation for totally real uh, should be uh, mostly understood, but uh, yeah, I would say the it's only over Q that the feature is, is, uh, is really well understood. Okay, so suppose, that the L value at one is non-zero. Okay, so then by the interpolation formula, uh, we know that this, the periodical function doesn't vanish at, at the trivial character. 
Okay, so here when I wrote this evaluation, uh, so usually we're gonna identify, uh, maybe we can write that here. Um, okay, so we're gonna use this many times that ZP of T can be um, identified with a one variable power series ring, as we saw in Antonio's lecture, for example, sending a, a topological generator to one plus T. Okay, so when I wrote this evaluation, uh, evaluating at the character at chi corresponds to evaluating at chi of gamma minus one. Okay, so evaluating at the trivial character uh, when we view lambda as a power series, that amounts to uh, evaluating at zero. Okay, so I'll, I'll use interchangeably these two points of view. Okay, so, so we get this non-vanishing and then, uh, so this tells us that T, the, the variable, T doesn't, doesn't divide this periodical function. And therefore, by the main conjecture, T doesn't divide this characteristic ideal either. Okay, and that means that, um, so by Bayesian's main conjecture, what we get is that the, the co-invariance of this Selmer group will be finite. Okay, so gamma co-invariance, uh, these are finite. And therefore, by the control theorem, the P infinity Selma group is finite. Okay, so uh, the P infinity Selma group the, over Q is finite. Okay, so that's what we get on the one hand. Okay, now on the other hand, uh, well, I, I mentioned that by the control theorem also, once you show that this is finite, uh, you get this lambda torsion, although here we're in particular assuming it. Okay, so let's write F for a characteristic power series. Okay, so we're gonna use this finiteness in a second. Okay, so let's write F uh, E over Q infinity for a characteristic power series. Characteristic power series for uh, this was our model. Then there is a, a classical result by, by uh, Schneider and, and Per Andrew that tell you essentially the, the P part of VSD formula for this uh, other element in lambda, which you, you can think of as being an algebraic periodical function. Okay, so they show that uh, when you compute Maybe I need more room here. Okay, so the, the value at zero of this of this element is up to a periodic unit given by um, this quantity times the the size of the p infinity Selma group times the product of the Tamagawa numbers. Divided by the size of the torsion. Okay, but on the other hand, we are assuming uh, that this holds. Okay, so that's telling us that, yeah, this, this, uh, the ideal generated by this is by definition this characteristic ideal. Okay, so we're saying by, in particular, is that, uh, Modulo units. This is the same as okay by Mesos main conjecture. This is the same as evaluating the at the same PID evaluation as this. Okay, which we know what it is by the interpolation formula. Okay, so it's what I wrote before. Is one minus one over alpha square times the value at one divided by omega. Okay, so you just combining these two, we get we get our conclusion. Okay, so p bar of VSD formula holds. Sorry for the control theorem. Is there some assumption? Yes. 
Now for control theorem, is there some assumption like EQP is zero, like no P torsion point over Q? No, no, no. You don't need that because I'm just doing things uh, with finite kernel and co-kernel. If there is some P torsion, there might be some some kernel. It might not be an injection, but Mesos control theorem just requires uh, a good ordinate point. Okay. Uh, are there any more questions? Question from Oh yeah, sorry. I, I, I yeah, I saw something on the chat and I didn't. Can you recall why alpha? Yeah, yeah. Why is alpha not one? Yeah. So that's because we are assuming that p is a good prime. Uh, so we know that that alpha will have complex absolute value uh, square root of p by the by the the very complex particular. Okay. So that would be a, that could be problematic if we were doing with uh, multiplicative primes, oh, but here uh, we're dealing with good or any ones. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, no problem. Okay, so, so that, how am I doing this time? Okay. Uh, when there's okay, a so, P torsion defined over Q, there is a possibility of having some non-trivial yes. pseudonal submodules. Um, I mean, when there's a P torsion defined over Q, like EQP uh -huh. is non-trivial, uh -huh. then there's a possible, at least there's a question of non-zero uh, pseudonal submodule, and that can mm -hmm. potentially introduce an error in this F E over Q infinity zero. Uh, I'm not sure, I think, uh... Yeah, I think this statement, yeah, I forgot to, I said in words, I didn't mention here, I didn't write it. Uh, this is, um, yeah, it's neither ampere and real. Yeah, I know what you're saying, uh, but yeah, I think the way, the thing I'm writing here is correct. So maybe the, the exposition in Greenberg, uh, yeah, he only proves it. So yeah, Greenberg has some very nice lecture notes from a summer school in Cetrado. And uh, he only proved this result under uh, when there is no P torsion defined over Q. But the results of Schneider and Perandrio uh, cover, cover the, the, the result in the general item state. Okay. Any more questions? All right, so next I'd like to move on to uh, the second bullet point, which was uh, this P converse to Grosse and Kolibagin uh, that will be now related to a different uh, main conjecture as already uh, advanced. Okay, so the relevant conjecture here was formulated by Perandriou in the, in the late 80s. Okay, so now, now instead of working over Q, we're gonna look over, we're gonna work over an auxiliary imaginary quadratic field. Okay, so K over Q will be an imaginary uh, quadratic field. I hear some noise in the background. Uh, okay. okay, so we're gonna assume that it satisfies the so-called uh, Heimlich hypothesis. Okay, the kind of the most classical one, which is uh, the level of generality in which Perandri worked. Okay, so it can be the statement that every uh, prime L dividing N splits in K. Okay, and now uh, we're going to look at the so-called anticyclotomic ZP extension of K. Okay, so I'll denote this by K infinity minus. Okay, so this is an extension uh, whose Gala group I'll denote gamma minus. Again, I sum up into ZP. Anticyclotomic. The ZP extension and 
And it's a, an extension which is, of course, a billion over K, but it's not a billion over Q. Uh, it's in the Galois group over Q is actually Galois over Q, but uh, the Galois group is a generalized dihedral group. Okay, so you get the semi-direct product with uh, one plus or minus one. Okay, and then, uh, so now we know uh, our E is modular. So if you fix uh, a modular parametrization by X not of N, okay, you get, you get Hegner points defined over each of these layers. So we know them uh, yeah, XN. Okay, for all n. And then using the pure linearity hypothesis, you can uh, do a slight modification of them so that they become non compatible uh, as you go from one layer to the next in this anti psychotomic tower. Okay, so because of our kind of working pure linearity hypothesis, uh, we get we can package together all these classes into a, a big homology class okay, after taking Kummer images. In this group, I'll denote as kind of check for compact. Oops, uh, this is K infinity. Okay, which uh, denotes the inverse limit by a co restriction of the thermal group over Kn minus with coefficients in TP of it. Okay, so if you want, this is the yeah, the inverse limit of the P to the N as M goes to infinity, and then you take another inverse limit uh, with respect to core restriction. Okay, now I have everything I need to state uh, per Andrews conjecture. Per Andrews main conjecture. Okay, so now, contrary to what happened in the ordinary case, uh, it is the presence of these Heiner points that precludes the possibility of uh, of uh, this module, the corresponding Iwasawa module, uh, to be lambda torsion. Okay, and so we, 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 she conjecture is that if I use a similar notation as before, okay, so this will denote the P infinity thermal group over K infinity minus, on triangle dual. So this is uh, has lambda rank one, has lambda minus rank one. Okay, and this lambda minus is the Iwasawa algebra for gamma minus. Uh, okay, so it has lambda rank one. And the, so we can look at the characteristic power series of its lambda torsion submodule. And what she predicts is that. This should be given essentially by the index, the square of the index of uh, this big cohomology class. Okay, so we get the characteristic idea of where lambda minus S infinity Q over Q infinity minus divided by uh, the span of this class. Okay, and to be entirely precise, I should add some extra factors here actually. So this also UK square, CE square. Okay, where UK is uh, half of the size of the unique group of K. And CE is the Manning constant of, it, of pi. Okay, Okay, namely, uh, if you pull back by a pi e, the, the neuron differential on e, you get a multiple of a new form, and uh, that multiple is, is this constant. So let me say uh, 2 pi i f of tau theta, or f of z, since I'm already using tau, f of z is z. Okay, where this is a new form, a normalized new form. Okay, so that's, that's your conjecture. 
And now uh, what I want to explain briefly is how this conjecture implies uh, the P converse to, to gross the again polygonic. Okay, so uh, second proposition. Uh, yeah, what is, yeah, HG, there's a question in the chat, what is HG? It stands for Hegner, it's an abbreviation for Hegner, just to remind ourselves that these are coming from Hegner. Okay, so Perandrius, Perandrius, uh, main conjecture implies P converse. to gross the Okay. All right, so let me remind you of the statement. Okay, so we wanna prove now that if the Selmer core rank over Q is one, then the order of vanishing uh, of the L series over Q uh, is one. Okay, so we are here. Okay, so let's see the proof. Okay, so, okay, so we're assuming uh, the Selmer core rank is one over Q. Okay, and we wanna use uh, the and reuse main conjecture, so we're gonna choose a suitable K. Okay, so we choose uh, K. Imaginary quadratic such that uh, the Hegner hypothesis holds and uh, the L value of E twisted by K, this quadratic twist, is not zero at one. Okay, and there is a uh, a uh, result of, of what Courget, for example, that will guarantee uh, we can always find such a thing. Okay, so then uh, we're gonna take Cato's result as kind of classical, okay, in, in this proof. Okay, so by Cato, uh, okay, so th this non-vanishing will imply that the, there are the Selma group of the twist over Q is, is trivial. Okay, so in particular, when we look at the core rank uh, of E over K, uh, it doesn't increase. It's not any larger than it was uh, over Q. Okay, so stays one. Okay, but now again, a form of Mesos control theorem will tell you that the, the ZP core rank of this is the same as the ZP rank of the gamma coinvariance of X infinity. Okay, so this is the same as the ZP rank of X E K infinity minus gamma minus coinvariance. Okay, that's by, by control theorem. Okay, so what do we get? We get that uh, the gamma coinvariance of X have uh, ZP, ZP rank one. Okay, so so now this uh, conjecture of Perandri is telling us that X is, has lambda rank one. So if up to a pseudo isomorphism is uh, lambda times uh, two torsion lambda modules then. Okay, so this copy of ZP is coming already from this uh, gamma coinvariance to this part. So that means that when I take gamma coinvariance to this one, I get something finite. Okay, but the gamma coinvariance of this part, sorry, yeah, it's the same as the gamma coinvariance of this one here. Okay, so let me write what we get. Okay, so that implies that gamma minus one, gamma is our topological generator, it's not gonna divide the characteristic idea of this S check E K infinity minus a modulo uh, our class. 
Okay, so here is the input of uh, parent reuse. Main conjecture. Okay, but okay, and here as I said, gamma is a topological generator. Okay, but if you unravel what this means, this is telling you that uh, this class kappa infinity minus uh, Hegner has non torsion image. Under, uh, let me call it kappa zero, under the natural projection map. Okay, so we can go from here to the to the gamma coin variance. And this uh, will have a map with finite kernel uh, in general to the Selmer group over K, TP. Okay, and this, our class here will be mapped to, to a class of denoting, I'm denoting kappa zero, which uh, it, it is non torsion from, from the above. Okay, but the way this kappa infinity Hegner was constructed at the Hegner points, what you see is that this kappa zero is nothing but the Kummer image of a Hegner point over K. Okay, so kappa zero is a Kummer image of a, a classical Hegner point. But this implies then by, by the gross agate formula, since uh, this point has uh, infinite order, By Gross again, this implies that the order uh, at s equal to one of, of the L series uh, first base change to k is, is exactly one. Okay, but, new, but now this L function will factorize as the L function of E over Q and the function of its quadratic trees, which we're assuming is, is non zero at one. So the order of vanishing of, of our L series over Q is, is also one. Okay, so here is L EK at one is non zero. So we get, we get what we want. Okay, so now we have this second, second implication. Are there any, any questions? Okay, so if not, uh, have well, 10 minutes left. So let's see if I have enough time now to explain uh, the last the last uh, implication here. Okay, so now we're going to introduce a third main conjecture uh, that will that if uh, known, it will imply in particular this p part of BSD formula, but now in time one. Um, okay. Okay, so this, this third main conjecture, I'm going to call it uh, the, the BDP main conjecture. BDP stands for, for Bertolini, Dalmon, and Prasanna, even though they, they, they never really uh, conjecture what I'm going to state. What I'm going to state can rather be viewed as a special case of Greenberg's uh, main conjectures for, for the formation of motives. Okay, so so now now we we're gonna assume we still work over a k satisfying the Kernel hypothesis, but now we assume an extra condition. So suppose also that p splits in k. Okay, so p ok is uh, v times v bar splitting k. Okay, so then uh, Bertolini, Dalmon, and Prasanna about almost 10 years ago now, um, okay, so they, under this uh, extra condition, they, they produce an element, LBBDP, 
continuity like this. Okay, so this leaves in what I'm gonna call lambda till the twiddle minus. Okay, so this is just some base extension of what we have before. Okay, we need to extend scalars similarly as one does for, for the cast periodical function to this uh, ring of integers of the completion of the maximal uh, and ramified extension of Q2. Okay, so they introduce this element uh, characterized by certain interpolation properties. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna write down the exact formula, but uh, so what it is is now we look at characters of gamma, let's say uh, dp bar, dp cross, which are uh, crystalline. At both uh, v and v bar uh, of weights, coach state weights, n minus n uh, with n positive. Okay, so note that all these characters have positive weights, so in particular, they are of infinite order. Okay, and for all such chi, uh, this is like a square root periodical function. Okay, so it's the square of this element that interpolates L values. So when you square this and you evaluate that chi, you get some non-zero multiple of the algebraic value of E over K twisted by chi. Okay, so these are very much the values uh, that are essentially the values that, uh, or really the values that uh, appear in, in uh, Professor Hida's uh, lectures. Okay. So yeah, so this star is an explicit non-zero constant. Okay, and so that's uh, the object on the analytic side. On the algebraic side, we're gonna have a, a greenberg selmer group. What I'm gonna call a greenberg selmer group, which is actually what Greenberg's uh, recipe gives you uh, when you look at, at this, Range of of uh, state weights for the, the twist of phi that we are considering. Okay, so I'm going to call it cell V e k infinity minus. Okay, and this is by definition uh, the kernel from H one k infinity minus uh, e p infinity. Maybe write like this. Going to, uh, okay, so first I'm gonna tell you what happens at places above P. Okay, so we want classes to be trivial when we restrict to uh, a decomposition group at, at B bar. Okay, and here I'm abusing a bit of notation that there might be more than one prime uh, above B bar in, in K infinity minus. So this should really just be should, this should really be interpreted as semi-local uh, cohomology. Okay, and then uh, we have the product over the Ws not dividing P and, and we both triviality there. Uh, minus E P infinity. Okay, so note that there is no condition at the primes above V. Okay, we impose triviality at V bar, but no condition at V. Okay, and now uh, we can state this, uh, they call major or BDP main conjecture. Okay, so that's the statement that the characteristic, sorry, the, the Pontryagin dual of, of this Selmer group should be a uh, torsion. Okay, so this is a uh, lambda torsion. And uh, as you can imagine, the characteristic ideal
will be generated by, by the square of this uh, BDP periodic function. Okay, and really this, the thing on the right hand side lives on this scalar extension, so I should really write tilde here. Okay, so maybe, uh, yeah, I might need to take five more minutes, but uh, yeah, I'll conclude by explaining this proof of, uh, explaining how this conjecture implies P part of BSV formula in, in rank one. Okay, so proposition three. Okay, so for this, we need to suppose that the P part of the BSV formula is known in, in rank zero, as we're gonna see in the proof. Okay, so suppose P part of BSD formula uh, known in rank zero. Then we can show that uh, PDP main conjecture will imply uh, the corresponding uh, formula, but in, in rank one. Okay, so let's quickly see the proof. Okay, so, so now we're assuming that the order of vanishing uh, that's equal to one of this is, uh, is one. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're gonna choose, uh, again, uh, we're gonna apply the BDP main conjecture for a suitable K. Okay, so we choose uh, k over q uh, such that, okay, so imaginary quadratic. Okay, so such that uh, Heimlich hypothesis calls uh, p splits in k. And also the L value of the twist is, is non-zero. Okay, and again, there are results from, from an eighteen number theory, uh, like what Fourier again, uh, for example, that will guarantee the existence of, of such k. Okay, so now again, we're gonna take uh, um, Colibagin as, as a classical result. Okay, so by, by Colibagin, Okay, because plus gross again, I should say, plus gross again. Okay, so this, our hypothesis together with uh, this will guarantee that the L series of E over K uh, vanishes to order one. So the Hegner point is, is non torsion. And therefore, Colibagin will tell us that the model Bay group is generated by, by the Hegner point. Okay, so I'm gonna write this by saying that EK modulo torsion is generated by a Hegner point. Okay, and moreover, the shy is finite. Okay, so this implies, uh, so there is an easy cohomology, a lot of homology computation that shows that, uh, let me write that over here, that shows that under this hypothesis, the, the Selmer group, this grimmer selmer group over K uh, will be finite. Okay, so this implies that the Selmer group, okay, by the same I define, but instead of over K infinity over, over K, this will be finite. Okay, and uh, in, which in particular, again, by a form of a control theorem implies that XB uh, is lambda torsion, okay? Which if you want, it's something we're assuming. So that's, that's okay. Okay, so now uh, let's 
give a name to a characteristic power C here for this X B. Okay, in lambda minus. Okay, so this is a characteristic uh, power series for uh, X V A K infinity minus. Okay, so then uh, there is a result analogous to the one I mentioned before of uh, Schneider and, and Perrin Ryu. Uh, that was uh, worked out by by uh, Jechev, Skinner, and, and and one. Okay, so the value at zero is given up to a periodic unit by uh, one minus a p of e plus uh, sorry, plus p over p square. Then you get time to the product of the Tamagawa numbers. Square for L dividing N, then times the order of Sha times uh, the log, the formal log of a Hegner point, square divided by uh, the index. Square. Okay, but so again, okay. so, so this is the set, uh, yet Skinner one. Okay, but on the other hand, we're assuming uh, this main conjecture. So this value at zero has the same PID valuation as the square of BDP at zero. Okay, so this is again up to PID units. This is by uh, BDP uh, main conjecture. Okay, but now in the preview, in the case of rank zero, downstairs we use the interpolation formula for the periodical function. This trivial character is outside the range of interpolation, but Bertoni, Damon, and Prasanna proves a nice formula uh, relating this, the value, this value outside the range. To the to the formal group logarithm of a tender point. Okay, and so the formula specializes to uh, these quantities times uh, the same factor times uh, the log of the tender point. Okay, so that's by the BDP formula. Okay, now I'm almost, I'm basically done. Okay, because, so now if, if you compare the two sides, uh, you get the following. Okay, so by the gross gear, by gross gear, we know that the P bar of VSD for an atic rank one. Okay, so when the L value, the L series of T over K vanishes to order one, it's equivalent to uh, having the index, the square of the index of the Hegner point uh, being the same up to a periodic unit to uh, the order of Sha. Uh, times the product of the Tamagawa numbers square times uh, UK square C square. Okay, but this relation on the side, on the right hand side is precisely what we get from uh, comparing these two sides. Okay, so we get P part of VSD over K, and then if we are assuming that is non over Q uh, in rank zero, then we get it in rank one. Okay, so, so we get P part of VSD uh, for uh, analytic rank 
over k equal to one. So we're done. Provided we know what we're assuming, uh, the rank zero. Okay, provided p power of VSB known in rank zero. Okay, so now that more precisely, we will need to know it for the quadratic twist. Okay, so, but uh, that's what we get. Okay, so so now we know that these three main conjectures we introduced, uh, the Mazur's main conjecture, uh, Perandrius main conjecture, and uh, the VDP main conjecture has these three arithmetic applications. So what I'm gonna do in the next two lectures is explain the proof of these three main conjectures uh, in the case of Eisenstein rank three. Okay, so I'll stop here, sorry for, for taking a few more minutes. Question? Yeah. Okay, so I see a question in the chat. So, uh, Ignat Gary is asking, are BDP and Perandius main conjecture known for all ordinary primes? Or just Eisenstein ones? Yeah, so the, the Eisenstein case is one of the cases that has been most recently uh, handled, and, and that's what I'll talk about. The ordinary primes, but where the p-torsion is irreducible as a Galois module, uh, there are many results known in uh, in this case. So good ordinary, but non-Eisenstein. So when one has some kind of weak image hypothesis on the p-torsion, and that was made mostly done by. Uh, so the key, the key was the key names to mention here would be uh, Hauer. Uh, and Shin one in the in the kind of non Eisenstein good ordinary case, and if you want non CM, and then the the CM case was uh, was worked out by by uh, Ashe and and Yetian. And there are some other words and, and refinements that that kind of get more and more cases, but all the previous cases uh, were known in the kind of cover the non Eisenstein case. So yeah, the, the Eisenstein thing. Yeah, is one of the most recent ones. So I have one question. So in the last uh, few pages, you have uh, yeah. shown a result of Skinner, Wan, and some other person. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, my question is: Is there an analogous uh, kind of formula for modular forms? Um, maybe it's not written in the literature, but uh, it's certainly within reach. So uh, this. Uh, yeah, so actually their work, uh, much of the work towards this formula is done in more generality than just for elliptic curves. And it's maybe towards the end in computing a certain kind of local index uh, that that they, they specialize to the case of uh, elliptic curves. And, and that's how they see this, this term appearing. Okay, but uh, certainly the case of uh, modal forms of way two, not necessarily with rational Fourier coefficients is uh, uh, accessible by the same techniques and high weight modular forms, uh, as far as I know, is not written down, but should also be uh, within reach. Okay, and uh, what is the name that you wrote before Skinner? Jetchev, Dimitar Jetchev. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. I, I wanted to ask uh, whether there are any developments in the Perindrius main conjecture or BDP main conjecture? Yeah, yeah. so actually, so uh, yeah, so as I was uh, mentioning in response to Egnat's uh, question, so the the case where, where the p-torsion has big image, where the Galois image is big, this was the first case to, to be uh, understood. And uh, so maybe the, yeah, the key names uh, in this case, would be work of Howard, uh, 
in one direction and, and seen one in the other. And um, the cases when you have a small image, these are more recent results. So in the CM case, as I mentioned, that was done by, uh, so what I'm saying is both Peran Reuse and, uh, and BDP's main conjecture, because, because as we're gonna see, they are uh, basically equivalent. So, uh, so yeah, when, when there is a small image, when the gala image is small, uh, the CM case uh, was first done by, by uh, Ashe and, and Yetian. That was maybe uh, three or four years ago. And uh, last year and this year, the, the Eisenstein case is uh, uh, this joint work with, with the other uh, Grossi and, and Chris Kinner that I wanna uh, talk about. So yeah, somehow the, so after combining all this, the kind of the good ordinary cases are, uh, yeah, basically known. Thank you. No problem. Uh, in all these things, you are taking the main conjecture validity only at uh, the trivial character, whereas you have also got some twisted version for the main conjecture. That's right. Does Actually, that's a yeah. Sorry. Does that imply any conclusions like using the control theorem? Do you have some versions? Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a very good point, and it connects to actually. Uh, so in in our proof of uh, in one of the proofs, I'm going to explain we are gonna crucially exploit the fact that once we know the main conjecture, we know it at any character. So in, what, uh, in the implications I have just explained, as you have observed, I only use the equality at the trivial character, but uh, we're gonna see in uh, maybe the third lecture that uh, we're gonna use crucially the fact that having the, non the main conjecture over lambda allow us to get equality at the very unit when we evaluate at any character. So, and, and that will be extremely, that will be a key, a key point in, in, in the argument. Are there any further questions? And this Greenberg uh, Selmer group, uh, which is connected uh -huh. with the BDP once, once yes. more, like what are the local conditions? Yeah, so the local conditions are, uh, yeah, so there is no condition at, at B. Okay, so we have this B and B bar. So uh, here we're imposing uh, triviality. Okay, we want classes to be trivial when, when we restrict to, to a decomposition group at that place. And at B, uh, we are imposing no condition at all. I see, I see, thank you, thank you. Yes. So if you want, this is like a, yeah, it's, it doesn't, there is no really, no inclusion between this and the usual thermal group because at one place you are imposing something stronger and at the other you are imposing something weaker. Further questions? So let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you.